Hello and welcome to the Horror Homestead. My name is Gibby and we are reading the week before a Five Nights at Freddy's interactive novel. We are not just a week before, we are a week night for. This is the fourth video. If you watch the first three videos, you know that I am loving this book so far. It is fun. Night three was like genuinely scary and I am so hyped to go through the rest of this story and i already know that at the end you like restart the book with additional items and you get like more story i love night three more than anything in this franchise in a while and so we're gonna see how night four goes um just to pull the pull the curtain back a little bit for you guys between recording this episode i was watching uh, the gt live where he's reacting to hyperdroid's video about the crying child's name being dave and i'm just literally like i'm still i'm still riding the high of that discovery hyperdroid is still like like, I'm still, like, cheering for you, buddy. Like, I'm so happy that that happened, and I'm so happy that Matt Pat's recognizing it. And you guys should be happy that it's hydration time. I didn't think I was going to get to this early in the video, did you? Don't worry, I'm not going to wait to ask you to like and subscribe until later. Now we're going to commence with night four. Night four, 12 a.m. Ralph, you, know something is off as soon as you arrive for your shift tonight. Way off. It doesn't take a detective to figure that much out because all the lights are on at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, like it's open for business. Only, it's midnight. So maybe someone forgot to switch off the lights on their way out, but it isn't as simple as that. Like the good night watchman you are, you check the security cameras before you do anything else, and what you see has you both baffled and anxious. The animatronics are more active than usual, especially for this hour. They seem to be having a party in the dining area. Freddy is up on the stage singing his clockwork heart out while Bonnie and Chica are showing off their moves on the dance floor below. Bonnie is swinging his bass guitar around and Chica is doing the chicken dance up and down the aisles, knocking chairs over. Even Foxy is joining in, so you know this is big trouble. He's dancing on the tables, crushing party hats and shredding tablecloths with his shiny metal feet. You cover your eyes. Now this is a nightmare. You don't know how you're going to clean this up, but you can't even think of janitorial duties until you shut down the party. How are you going to do that? You can't just ask them nicely to stop. They'll come right after you. With all the lights on, maybe the animatronics never switched over into night mode, and they don't know what to do without supervision or kids to entertain. You might be able to get them back on track if you just turn off the lights. But you can't walk around switching lights off either. Then they'll come right after you. If only there was a way to turn off all the lights at once. Other than praying for a well-timed blackout to make it easier for you, your best bet is to head to the breaker room and shut down the power to the entire restaurant. That should force their systems to reboot. But there's a big problem. The breaker room is behind the stage. Yo, you think he's gonna get into a springlock suit? You think he's gonna have to be Golden Freddy to get past them? Uh, behind the stage, on the other side of the dining area. And sneaking through there with all the lights on without alarming Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, or Foxy would be a small miracle. If you succeed at that, you're definitely going to buy a lottery ticket in the morning. If you head to the dining area and hope for the best, go here. Try to pace around the office thinking of another way, do here. I think, I think we should do a spring walk suit, so I'm going to pace around the office. Do you think, what if he sees Golden Freddy in the corner because he's pacing in the office? You walk back and forth in the cramped security office. It may seem like a waste of energy to some people, or an annoying habit but pacing helps you figure your way out of a bad situation. You think best on your feet, and moving around feels like you're doing something, even if you aren't actually going anywhere. But tonight, you feel like a zoo animal trapped in a too small cage. The security office is the only safe place at the moment, but what happens when the animatronics decide to bring the party to you? You aren't good at parties, especially costume parties, where you might end up stuffed into a suit filled with robot parts. You keep walking between the lockers at the back of the office and the desk at the front, where the TV shows the animatronics wrecking the dining area. You don't know how many times you've looked at those lockers, but on your 10th or 11th trip, you notice something new behind the lockers. A ventilation opening near the floor. You drag the lockers away from the wall, wincing at the sound of scraping metal. Has this vent always been here? You're excited. You can use these to sneak right by the dining area undetected, if you can find your way. You crawl inside and immediately face a decision. If you turn right, go here. If you turn left, go here. Well, we're gonna fit by our, go by our old standard of always go left first. We're gonna go left. 
Uh, fun fact, if you think that that's just from the uh, from the VIP book playthrough where Chica tells you to always go left, it's actually not. Um, if you're an OG and uh, seven years ago you watched my old Let's Play channel, you know that going left first is an old an old adage I live by. Playing Zelda games as a kid, if you're faced by a fork in the road, I was always like, I'm going to go left first. I want to see what's left. So going left first is, in fact, my uh, my go-to in video games in general. As soon as you choose to go down the left shaft, you start second-guessing yourself. Maybe you should have turned right to head to the northwest corner of the pizza place. You almost turn around, but you figure all these passages must lead to the same place eventually. You don't handle confined spaces well but these corridors are surprisingly roomy, much bigger than they need to be. With just the endless expanses of gray metal that shift under your weight, you become sensitive to other clues about your whereabouts. One section of the vent is sticky with grease and dust, and you know you must be passing through the kitchen. You're on the right track. Up ahead, there's another junction, to the left and the right. Picturing the layout of the restaurant in your mind, you can't figure out what could be to the right. There shouldn't be anything there, at least no room or area you can access normally. Um, so turning left goes to the breaker room, turning right goes to this mystery room. Let's see. It gets darker as you move along the right corridor. Less light from the restaurant is seeping through the cracks and vent openings. This route must be taking you further from the break room, but your curiosity gets the better of you. Where are you? Are you even still in the restaurant? Now it's basically pitch black, and even more disorienting but you push on. Finally, you reach a dead end, literally. As you grope around for another path, your hands fall on something thin and dry, wrapped in threadbare fabric. It makes you think about the skeleton model in your high school biology classroom. This is a bone, you think. You drop it with a resounding thud, but you don't examine it any further. You don't want to know if it belonged to a human, or why it's here. You're somewhat relieved that you can't see anything though your imagination is vivid enough to provide its own interpretation of the scene. You turn around and make your way to the breaker room. Bone? So it says that there's thread on it, so not like a decomposing raccoon. Um, wow, a bone in the ventilation shaft above above a secret area in the restaurant. Um, I wonder if that's going to come back in this book, or if that's supposed to be lore that we understand from the games. You can tell you're going the right way because you hear music and crashing sounds from the dining area. The animatronics are going to wreck the restaurant if you don't put a stop to this and tidy up before morning. You pick up the pace, but moving faster means making more noise because the metal shaft shakes violently under your weight. The music in the dining area abruptly cuts and you freeze. Do they hear you? Maybe they've simply worn themselves out. If they've been operational since the pizza place closed, they haven't had a chance to recharge on the stage yet. If that's the case, all you need to do is climb out of the vent shut off all the lights, and somehow move the animatronics back up to their charging platforms. Could it really be that easy? So if they're out of batteries, then they can't do anything. Um, we can exit to go and do that, or we can keep moving forward. I think there's a lot of reasons they may have stopped. They may have stopped because that intruder guy is still here. Um, I think we should continue moving forward in the vent to try to get to the breaker room. Because if they're disabled, then nothing can hurt us there. You stick to the plan. Sometimes the animatronics are more dangerous when you can't hear them. And just because the music has stopped doesn't mean they have. You keep moving forward. You should be hitting the breaker room any minute now. Your knees hurt from crawling on them, and your hands are caked with grime. You keep having to brush cobwebs and tiny spiders from your hair and neck. You're going to take a long, hot shower when you get home. You reach another corridor branching to your right, sooner than expected. Does this go to the breaker room? Or somewhere else? If you listen for clues to where you are, go here. Head right, go here. Keep moving forward, go here. Um, I'm a very listen-to-music type guy. Listen for clues type guy, so... The silence makes you nervous. You don't want to move for fear of making too much noise and being detected by the animatronics. And without their music playing in the dining area, it's harder to orient yourself in the vents. So you wait and listen. The only sounds you can hear are your own heartbeat pounding in your ears and your shallow breathing in the confined space. But waiting pays off. The music in the dining area resumes. It seems to be coming from the corridor on your right. The music should muffle the sound of your movements in the vent, and there's a good chance all four animatronics are still partying together in the dining area. You push on to get a look ahead, and there it is, the breaker room. Unfortunately, a grate is covering the vent, but you can see the power panel on the wall, agonizingly out of reach. You're about to kick at the cover to try to pop it off when the music abruptly stops again. You listen 
but footsteps echo in the vents from all over the restaurant. The animatronics could be anywhere and everywhere. You have to shut off the lights and fast. Okay, so they probably only stopped the music because they could hear you when they wanted to hear you. Um, so it's a good thing we didn't go and check on them. They would have made us dead. So we can kick off the vent or wait and hope for more music or use the bonus item. They're not going to start the music again. There's going to be like one red underneath you and then a mouse is going to scare you and you're going to gasp and Foxy's going to get you. Um, we're going to kick off the vent cover. We're going to run to that outlet. We're going to switch, flip off the switch, switch you off the flippy. And like waiting for, like whenever it loads like this, I'm always worried it's going to have like a big game over. It's literally like a jump scare. Um, there we go. I was worried the book was going to be broken. You're so close to your goal. You decide to risk it and kick that cover off. If you're fast and lucky enough, you'll be able to turn off the power before anyone can get into the room. You start kicking at the grate, but it's sturdier than you expected, considering the deteriorating state of everything else around here. Each impact of your shoe against the metal grill only seems to bend it and make a tremendous banging noise. This must be why they call it the Breaker Room, you mutter between kicks. Because you have to break your way in. Someone groans. Fair, you say. Not my best dad joke. Who groaned? What are, you, what, are you, what are you talking about? Your daughter would have hated it too, but she isn't here, thank goodness. So who was that? You glance over your shoulder and see not a little girl, but Chica the Chicken crawling towards you, head twitching, beak snapping, eyes red. You kick harder at the grate until it finally explodes outwards and clatters against the wall dangling by one resilient bolt. You propel yourself out of the vent and scramble to your feet in the breaker room. Chica screams and continues crawling toward you. You hold up your hands and back away. Come on, the joke wasn't that bad. You're so focused on her, you're surprised when Foxy bursts through the door and gets to you first. Game over. I see, I don't know, I always have this thing about how Susie is characterized a lot more than any of the other MCI kids. Um, and so Susie potentially groaning at this dad joke is very funny to me. Very, like, interesting. Like, theorist funny, not, like, haha funny. Okay, so we're gonna hope for more music. We're definitely gonna guide, because Chica's just gonna get us. You hold out a little longer in the hopes that the music will resume. Your patience is rewarded. Chica's in the vent. What are you talking about? Chica, your Chica's rewarded. Your patience re is rewarded when a new song begins. Not the dance music from the dining hall, but Freddy Fazbear's music box renditioning of a classic piece. Closer than the dining area, and coming closer still. You fight the urge to hide in the vent, not trusting an animatronic to sneak up behind you while you're preoccupied worrying about Freddy. Freddy is still some distance off, so you kick at the metal vent cover until it finally pops free and clatters to the floor. The music is louder now, and the tune is almost over. You don't want to find out what will happen when it ends. Crawl into the breaker room. The room is unfriendly to human life. Exposed power conduits run along the ceiling, and power cables and wires dangle down from the walls and the ceiling. You don't want to touch any of them. The air around you buzzes with electricity. It's at least 20 degrees warmer in here than anywhere else in the restaurant. It would be really easy for a fire to start in here, you think. No one would ever question it. Sweat drips down your forehead and back as you study the power control panel. There are five round buttons, like elevator buttons, faintly glowing green. Green is good. It means they're on. You should be able to just push them to turn off power to each area of the restaurant but you don't know whether you need to pe press them in a certain order or risk shorting out the entire system. All your life, you've gotten used to not pushing buttons, especially when you don't know what they do. But it seems like that's your official job lately. Well, this is what you came here for, so you better do something. Do I have five options? I do. No, I have many. <sighs> One at a time, left to right. All the buttons at once. Try to figure out a certain sequence. Um, I mean, the only downside to figuring out a certain sequence is that Freddy might get me because the music is winding down, but that's what I do. I would see what happens. Let's figure out a sequence. Sequence this out. Nothing is as it seems at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. There must be a trick to this. Or this is all a trick. You stare at the glowing buttons on the control panel. The metal around them is scratched. These faint lines could be numbers telling you what order to press the buttons in. You rub your eyes. This place is getting to you. You look around for other clues. There's a faded poster of Bonnie on the back of the door. The intended way to enter and leave this room. That could be significant. Why would someone put a mascot poster in here? Only staff would ever come to the breaker room. In big bright letters, the poster reads, Party time! But the word time is scratched out. You've played enough point-and-click adventure games to realize this might be a hint. You need to press the buttons to shut down the partying. Wait, there are five buttons. And five letters in the word party. P-A-R-T-Y. 
What if each button is one letter, and you need to press them in alphabetical order? So the second button would be the first, because it's a P. You press it, and the light changes from green to red. Now A is next. You push the first button. You're so certain you're onto something, you miss Freddy entering the room. To shut you down. Game over. I'm so glad that game over was on another page, because I thought that was the right answer. I loved where that was going. That is so sad. That is so sad for five seconds until we try the other route. Alright, um, we're gonna push them all at the same time, like you're playing a game of hide-and-seek on an elevator in a hotel and it's 2007. The buttons are close enough together that you can just push them all at the same time. That could be kind of a fail-safe, you reason, because there's no way someone would do that by accident, but it would be easy to push all the buttons at one time. You place your left thumb against the first button and spread the fingertips of your right hand over the remaining four buttons. You feel something like a tingle or a tickle in your hands, and the buttons hum at your touch. The hair on your head lifts away as if charged with static. Here goes, you say. You push all five buttons simultaneously and the panel starts sparking. The buttons flash and start to scald your skin, but you can't pull your hands away. Your muscles are locked in as 1.21 gigawatts of power pump through you, your hands completing a big electrical circuit. You smell something like cooking bacon and burnt hair, and then it's lights out for you. Okay, we are going to push them one at a time from left to right, the final option in this room. Okay, let's not overthink this, you think. Or maybe you should overthink this. This place has been making you question everything and second-guess yourself at almost every step. But sometimes you need to follow your instincts and use common sense, that's why they hired you, isn't it? Isn't it? In all your years with Fazbear Entertainment, they haven't exactly had people lining up to fill positions. And it's been harder and harder to hire new staff thanks to negative news coverage of a few isolated incidents. You were so proud when they hired you for security, but what if you were the only candidate? Well, you've proven your value time and time again. Tonight is no different. You're going to leave Freddy's with a spotless record and a glowing recommendation, so you'll have your pick of opportunities. A job that will give you more time to spend with Gopelia, and a lower chance of suffering serious harm, disability, or death on the job. You quickly press each button on the panel in sequence. They glow crimson and a soft hum indicates power shutting off around the restaurant. Then, one by one, the buttons turn green again as the system resets. You quietly crack open the door to peek into the dining area. The main lights are now out. If you sneak through the dark restaurant to the security office to here, if you take the vent back out here. Um, I would think there's a high possibility that, like, Chica's in the vent behind you when you turn the power off. I'm gonna go through the dark restaurant. I think that makes the most sense. You sneak into the dark dining area. You successfully stopped the animatronics before they did any real damage. The morning crew shouldn't have any trouble straightening the askew tables and righting all the chairs. They'll be curious about what happened, and they'll probably blame you, but this whole incident will be in your report. Not that anyone ever reads your reports or believes what you wrote. The home office doesn't like paper trails, so they're probably filing your paperwork right into the trash can. Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica have returned to the stage and are recharging on their platforms. As you expected, switching off the lights triggered their night mode. Their internal clocks are probably all confused now, and they'll likely be on low power tomorrow. But even if they freeze up on the stage, it will be far from the worst thing that has happened during a performance. By a long shot. The worst thing is definitely the bite of 83. You have nearly reached the security office and are feeling pretty good about the night's work when you hear heavy footsteps running behind you. The clank of bare metal feet against a tiled floor. It's Mr. Foxy! You break into a run without even looking behind you. Though you never see what hits you, it has to be Foxy. Since he's been taken out of the limelight, he responds differently to darkness. This is how he likes to party. That is true. The light is what resets him and that he doesn't like. Alright, we're gonna take the vents back to the security office. It would be faster to take a more direct route to the security office, but strange enough, you feel more comfortable in the ventilation shaft. It's the only way to travel. The trip doesn't take as long as you thought it would, since you know the way now. Once you thought you heard something scraping and clanking and thumping in the vents, but it was pretty far away, off near Pirate's Cove. It's almost 6am, Foxy, you call out softly. While you doubt he heard you or would listen if he did, for some reason he does not come after you. When you crawl out of the vent into the security office, you see the clock reads 5.57am. It's close to quitting time. Uh, so click here to wait until 6am. Um, I have a feeling that because the animatronics internal clocks are off, they're not going to reset at 6. So I think we're going to get dead anyway. Oh no, we go home, we lived. We definitely did it wrong. We didn't get any cool trinket, um, but we did live. When you get home, you head straight for your daughter's room, but she isn't there. Shaking with fear, you call out for her and search the house. Coppelia? Coppelia? In here. 
Her voice is muffled, but it sounds like it's coming from your bedroom. You rush upstairs and find her sitting on your messy bed in her pajamas. Pell! You rush to her side and grab her in a tight embrace. Ow, what's wrong? I was worried when you weren't in your room. What are you doing here? She yawns. I missed you, Daddy. I missed you too, kiddo. Any reason? Because you weren't here, duh. You roll your eyes. You lie next to her and stare up at the ceiling while she snuggles against you. This is nice, you think. Coppelia used to do this all the time when she was little, but you know these days are numbered. Eventually, probably sooner than you like, she won't even want to talk to you. You'll miss all those sleepless nights with her tossing and turning, sticking her feet in your face, lying on your arm until it's numb, so you'd better enjoy it while you can. The next thing you know, Coppelia is kissing you goodbye on the cheek. She's dressed for school and holding a Pop-Tart in one hand, her backpack in the other. I'm leaving, she says. Daddy, can you stay home from work today? I can't, you mumble, already falling back to sleep. Just one last night. Wow. So that really was a valid ending, like we survived. Um, yeah. You, so these, one, the thing I like about this book, I like better than VIP, and I'll probably like better than the Enter the Pit book, is that each night is actually like a video game level. Um, overall, I think that there's a possible ending in which if you don't get the pen and the coin and the this and the that and the cupcake, that, like, you might not get the best ending. But I don't think there's a possibility where, like, we can't win night five unless we did a specific path on night four. I think that no matter what, if you get to a night, you are safe, and nothing before that point mattered except for maybe the five star ending the best ending whatever um so that one just seemed very easy possibly because i did all the correct decisions first um so yeah we're gonna do what we always do we're gonna start the night over and we're gonna do every single path until we get back here to night five so we're gonna rewind all the way to the start of night four all right so we're in the situation where we need to go and turn the lights out we can pace around the office or go straight there Previously, we paced around the office and we went through the vents, so now we're going to go straight to the dining area, and definitely just immediately die. Um, but hey, that's the point of the game. You slip quietly down the west hall toward the dining area. At the entrance to the room, you press yourself against the wall and peer inside. Freddy and Foxy are on the stage together, while a strange song plays over the speakers. You think it's a recent pop hit, but it's running backward at a reduced speed. Okay. Every now and then, you catch words and phrases in the recording that gives you chills. Death for all, pain, fire and knives, stuff like that. You must be mishearing them. The human brain often tries to make sense out of nonsense, like the FNAF plot, <laughs> leading you to see and hear things that aren't really there. But there's no making sense out of what Foxy is doing. His movements are jerky and erratic, less like dancing and more like malfunctioning. It reminds you of watching Clay Models move in one of those old Ray Harryhausen stop-motion films. Bonnie and Chica are playing together. Fun fact, the reason that that um, bad old stop-motion looks bad in, in like Ray Harryhausen movies um, is because they didn't add any motion blur to the uh, to the models, which is why modern movies don't look that bad anymore. Um, so like the new Beetlejuice movie came out and there's the big sandworm, and they like purposely don't give it motion blur to make it look like it did back in the 90s when it was bad. Um, but yeah, the reason that if you watch, like, the Jason and the Argonauts movie with the, the skeletons, which is the really famous one, um, the reason that it looks weird is because they don't add motion blur to the clay models. Bonnie and Chica are playing games. Chica tosses party hats toward Bonnie, and Bonnie swings at them with his guitar. You might be able to get by them unnoticed while they're preoccupied with their antics. If you sneak along the left side of the room, do here. Sneak along the right, or sneak under the tables. You know what we're doing, fam, we're going left! We died. You really didn't think this through. To get from the West Hall corridor to the right side of the dining area, you have to sneak along the back of the dining area or go back and cut across the security office to the East Hall. Rather than waste any more time, you decide to take your chances where you are. Just keep dancing, you think. With all the lights on, the animatronics notice you right away, and they're delighted to have an audience. You barely make it halfway across the room before Bonnie snatches you up. They give you the best seat in the house at the front of the dining area. It gives you a perfect view of the stage, where Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica perform increasingly disturbing songs and dance routines. You have no choice but to watch and hope that their batteries wear down eventually, and try not to think about what they'll do when they get bored. Game over. I like that one, actually. It's pretty funny that, like, Bonnie sits you down in a seat because he, he thinks he's still in uh, performance mode. Alright, so this time we're going to sneak along the right side of the room, which should be shorter. You're already on the left side of the dining area, so it's a shorter trip to the north end, and you want to spend as little time in here with the animatronics as you can. You crawl along, keeping behind the tables and out of their line of sight. But there's a big gap between the tables near Pirate's Cove, 
They don't want anyone sitting too close to the entrance. You keep an eye on Freddy, Foxy, Bonnie, and Chica. You know what's really interesting is whenever they list the animatronics, it's typically in the order Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, Foxy, which just kind of makes sense, like those are the sort of order of importance of the characters. But right here, Freddy, Foxy, Bonnie, and Chica, it's just like a different ordering of things. I wonder if they're supposed to be like a like a, a corporation-approved listing of the order of the animatronics. Obviously, Freddy will always come first. But yeah, whether or not Foxy or Chica is last is interesting. When their attention is elsewhere, you sprint toward the next table. When you're halfway across, the music abruptly stops. You instinctively dive roll to your left, through the curtains into the dark entrance of Pirate Cove. You bruise your shoulder, but that likely hurts less than being forced to occupy the same space as an exoskeleton in a mascot suit. The animatronics didn't see you. They're still going about their business. Another song starts up, playing backwards. Misery. Agony. But for how long? You might be trapped in Pirate's Cove for a while, waiting for your chance to move forward. But this is also a rare opportunity. You've never been back here before, and with Foxy enjoying his comeback tour with the old band, you can look around the area while he's gone. Maybe there's another way to the breaker room through here. If you look around Pirate Cove, touch here. If you peek through the curtains to keep it safe, go here. We're looking around Pirate's Cove, of course we are. As you look around Pirate Cove, you consider why you've never been back here before, even during the day. The only reason you can come up with is Foxy makes you uncomfortable. You used to love watching him perform, and as a lifelong fan of pirate stories, he was always your favorite of the Fazbear mascots. But seeing him up close and personal was a different story, and you have to admit, he's scary, especially in his current state of disrepair. Especially when you know what the animatronics are truly capable of. You just never want to be alone with Foxy in a room, especially on his home turf. There he is. There's our boy. It's a shame they had to shut this area down, though. It was popular with the kids, and you can tell the designers put a lot of work into it. They built a veritable cave of wonders, with treasure chests and glittering piles of gold and jewels around Foxy's charging platform. They're all fake, of course, but they're so convincing. You want to stuff your pockets with them. They really should pay us more, you think. But just remember what happened in the Goonies. You gotta, you gotta, but you gotta give them the treasure back. That's what happens in the Goonies. At the very back of the cove, you find a nook with a pedestal and an old-fashioned scale, a beam with pans suspended at either end. The pans are filled with gold and trinkets. The pan on the left is slightly lower than the one on the right. There's a small slot in the pedestal just below the scale, like the ones that dispense tickets at games around Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Below the alcove is a metal grate covering a ventilation shaft. So we can examine the grate. It takes up from the left. If you have a coin and want to put in the right pan, do it here. We, we don't have the coin. Because we never got the coin. We never got the coin at all. So I don't know what that's talking about. If you have a ring and you want to put in the right pan, do it here. Um, we're obviously going to do all of these. I think taking the grates just going to leave us. Going to lead us to the... Like, we're going to meet up with the other path if we take the grates. We're going to do that first. I guess it didn't. The vent under the prize scale would make a great hiding spot. In fact, you could even use the ventilation shaft to crawl to the breaker room without being detected by the animatronics. You stoop to examine the grate covering the vent. It's secured by four big screws in each corner. Someone was serious about limiting Foxy's access to the rest of the pizza place, or preventing someone in the vents from accidentally crawling into his lair. Unfortunately, it's also preventing you from escaping through the ventilation shaft. Footsteps approach. You have to get through that gate right now. If you try to pull the grate off, tap here. If you have a screwdriver, use it. We do have the screwdriver. We got it um, when we went to the back room. We got the flashlight and the screwdriver. Um, so screwdriver is obviously the right answer, but I... You know, let's just, let's just keep going the right answer. Wait, we're going to do all the other paths later. All right. Having the right tool for the right job makes such a difference. The screwdriver makes quick work of removing the screws from the vent cover. You pull it off quietly and climb inside the shaft, just as something enters Pirate's Cove. From inside the shaft, you see Foxy's feet as he stomps around looking for you. He stops right in front of the vent opening and studies the scale for a while. Okay, so if you had moved the scale, he would have known you were there. You hear a crash, and the scale and toy treasures on it scatter across the floor. Finally, he walks away and out of Pirate's Cove, singing a little ditty. You wipe sweat from your face and take stock of your choices. You think if you turn left, the shaft will lead you back to the security office, which means right should lead you to the stage and the breaker room, and toward the breaker room. Bruce Willis makes this look easy! You think as you crawl through the ventilation shaft on your hands and knees? It's a die-hard reference. The metal is caked in old grease. That must have been carried here from the kitchen over the years. Cobwebs cling to your face and hair. Warm air pushes past your face, and you smell something that is definitely dead and rotting. Probably a small animal, you think. Each time you move, 
the metal flexes and wobbles and makes a soft thwump. Sound carries, and you're worried the animatronics will hear you if the music stops. Right now, there's no chance of being detected over the circus music they're blasting in the dining area. It's so loud, you feel the bass in the ventilation shaft. You forge ahead. At least the shaft isn't as cramped as you would have expected. It's probably much bigger than it needs to be. Even Bonnie could probably fit inside. Great. Now you're worrying about Bonnie coming after you in the vents. There's no reason to assume they even know about the vents, you think. This is probably the safest place in the whole restaurant, other than the security office. So why do the four walls remind you of a coffin? The breaker room can't be much further. You reach a corridor branching to your right. Now, which way do you go? Listen for clues, head right, move forward. Um, will this loop us around, right? You're 75% sure that the breaker room is on your right, so you take the turn and advance slowly. You're maybe closer to 50% sure you're going in the right direction, but that certainly goes down the further you crawl. Is it possible you've gotten so turned around that you've overshot the breaker room and are somehow headed in the opposite direction? If you didn't know any better, you'd say you were heading toward Pirate Cove because you hear Foxy singing ahead of you. You stop and turn around, but then you notice a dim glow ahead of you in the darkness. You head toward it, thinking it might be the exit to the breaker room after all. Foxy singing gets louder. It seems to be right in front of you, but the vent has a way of bouncing sound around in disorienting ways. Your skin raises in goosebumps, and the hairs on the back of your neck curl up. Too late, you realize that the light you're chasing is Foxy's left eye. He's in the vents with you. Foxy lifts his eye patch, and now there are two glowing eyes only ten feet away and coming closer. He makes a terrible racket as he scrabbles toward you in the metal corridor. Then he opens his mouth. The last thing you hear is his horrible, human-like scream reverberating around you. Game over. Jesus Christ! I think Foxy got to Toto. I'm gonna have to hit, take him to the, to the vet right now. Uh, I'll be back in a minute. All right, we're all good. He got a little, he got a little scratch. We had, to, we had to go get him fixed up, but he's he's happy now, isn't that right? Yeah, he's scared. He's, he doesn't like this story. It's too scary for him. Okay, so if we go right, Foxy gets us. We can go forward or look for clues so we're gonna go forward you decide to keep moving if you miss the correct turn you'll just back up and try again some dust filtering down from the top of the ventilation shaft makes you sneeze you stop and wipe your nose with the back of your hand and it's only because you pause for that moment that you hear something moving behind you thump 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 whatever it is was keeping pace with you so you didn't notice the noise until now. From the way the metal trembles against your palm, it's something larger and heavier than you. Your size and speed are the only advantages you have over Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica. So you move faster, hoping you can get out of the vent before your stalker catches up. There's an exit ahead, and you were right, it's the breaker room. You put on another burst of speed, but before you reach the end of the shaft, you feel a sharp pain in your right leg. You look back, there's a giant fish hook stuck in it, dragging you backward. Wait, not a fish hook. It's a pirate hook, belonging to Foxy the Pirate. Just your luck, as he's the one animatronic you can't outrun. You grab onto the grate covering the vent as Foxy keeps pulling. You grit your teeth against the pain of the steel grill digging into your fingers, holding on for dear life until you black out. Okay, so if you go forward, you die to Foxy. You go right, you die to Foxy. So we're going to listen for clues to where we are. The silence makes you nervous. You don't want to move for fear of making too much noise and being detected by the animatronics, and without their music playing in the dining area, it's harder to orient it yourself- wait. Um, oh, did we catch up with the other- yeah, okay, so we caught up with the other story. We caught up with the other path. So, that is all the paths. If you go into the vent in Foxy's Pirate Cove, he either gets you or you meet up with the other path. So now we have to go all the way back to Foxy's Pirate Cove and see what happens if we mess with this little scale thing. Alright, so that's good. Okay, so we can take coins from the left pan, put the ring in the right pan, because we gave our daughter the water gun, so we still have the ring. But we never got the coin. Still upset about that coin. Uh, we're going to steal some coins, which is the opposite of the Goonies, so we're going to get very dead from this. You take a coin from the scale pan on the left and are disappointed to discover it isn't real. It's lightweight and plastic, painted gold with Foxy's face on it. It's worthless except as a souvenir for your daughter. You slip the coin into your pocket and then remove more of the plastic coins from the left pan making it rise until it's at the same level as the one on the right. Once the scale is in balance, you turn around and find Foxy standing behind you, head tilted sideways. He raises his right arm with the wicked-looking hook at the end of it. Whatever happens next, you feel like you earned it by stealing from your job. 
All right, um, we still don't have the coin. Still don't know what that's about. You need something heavy to weigh down the pan on the right. You reach into your pocket and pull out the gold ring you found in the kitchen. As soon as you add it to the lighter pan, the scale shifts into perfect balance. A recording of cheering children plays, confetti falls, and the pedestal dispenses a ticket. That's it? One lousy ticket, you mutter? The gold ring was definitely worth more than whatever you can get with this at the price counter. What a ripoff. You consider grabbing the ring back, but you've always been one to play by the rules, and that includes not cheating at games. So you take the ticket. It's an old ticket, wrinkled and stained with drops of tomato sauce. The green color has faded, along with the word stamped on it, Fred Bear's Family Diner. Now that's a throwback. That place has been closed for years, but it was a predecessor to Fazbear Entertainment's Freddy's Pizza franchise. This artifact might just be worth more than the gold ring if you found the right buyer. Freddy's biggest fans will buy anything. Then you turn the ticket over and the dollar signs fade away. Someone's written on the back of it, and the ink looks recent. 2014. So that's gonna be the, um, on a previous night we needed a code to get into a phone thing. Um, so that code needs to be used on the phone. So I guess there's gonna be a whole ending to this that you need to metagame, because, like, you need to beat it first. Are those footsteps? You might have company soon. At the ticket here inventory, um, so we can peek through the curtain or look for a place to hide. If we look for a place to hide, it's gonna be the vent, we're gonna loop through that whole thing. So we're gonna peek through the curtain and lose. You peer out from behind the curtains. Freddy, Bonnie, and Chica are still partying, but Foxy is looking right at you. You're afraid to move, certain that the slightest motion will send him running toward you. You don't even dare blink. The irony of the situation doesn't escape you. You and Foxy on opposite sides of his curtain, watching and waiting for your chance to move. I guess that makes this the irony curtain. You snicker at your own terrible joke and Foxy tenses, ready to spring into action. You freeze. No more bad puns. This isn't how you thought it would end, in a staring contest with an animatronic. You consider that if he runs out of power while sitting there with his eyes opened, you would never realize it. Not being able to move your body is sending your mind racing, and you can't stop from thinking about everything. Your life, your daughter, the choices that brought you here. You can't control the thoughts that pop into your head. The only thing you know for sure, stop, you warn yourself, but you can't keep the punchline from coming. Never play chicken with a fox. That's the um that's my that's my rendition of um of music that plays when there's a pun. You laugh. Game over. Alright, if you look for some place to hide, um the vent under the price scale, okay, so then you you go back and then you go through the vent and then you meet up with the other story. Um so this is the correct way because you get that little ticket thing. Um which is what makes going this way right, because now we have that code. Um, we didn't try to pull the grate off without the screwdriver. Let's see how we die in this one. You grab onto the vent cover and pull as hard as you can. The sharp edges slice into the tips of your fingers, but you don't let that stop you. The screws are old, and the grate slowly wiggles free. If you can loosen it just a little more, you should be able to twist off the screws manually with just your fingers. Who needs a stinking screwdriver? You're making so much noise, though, and the footsteps nearby quicken and grow louder. You also hear something in the ventilation shaft. Thump. 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 You think it's just your exertions echoing back to you, until a face suddenly presses up against the metal grate. Bonnie. He pushes at the vent, and now that you've loosened it for him, it pops right off. You scramble backwards on the floor until you bump into something hard. You reach behind you and feel exposed endoskeleton feet. In the corner of your eye, you see the flash of a metal hook. Game over. Alright, we're going back all the way to the beginning. There's a couple paths we didn't do. Um, we're gonna go to the dining area. We're gonna hide under the table. I think that's really the only path we haven't done. Um, sneak and hide under the tables. You crouch run toward the party table closet to the west hall entrance. Chica, so they're, they're still partying in the dining hall, all of them. Chica swivels her head in your direction, but you drop flat to the floor before she spots you. You squeeze between two chairs to get under the table and wince when one of them scrapes along the tile. It turns out the cleaning crew didn't doesn't do a great job under the tables. The tiles are sticky and crumbs dig into the palms of your hands as you crawl across them. You encounter a slice of petrified pizza that almost makes you gag. Then there's a pile of small bones you have to cross. What's with the bones? The restaurant's chicken wings are boneless. Why are there bones? So you don't know what these could be. This is so disgusting. You've come to realize that not everyone has been as diligent at their work as you, and you wonder what other corners are being cut around here. You're about to cross to an adjoining table when it suddenly tips over. You dart back out of sight and scurry to get under another table, just like you should scurry to hit that subscribe button, as well as liking the video and leaving a comment. 
You scurry to get to the other table just as the one you leave is tipped away. Bonnie smashes his guitar down inches from where your head was a moment ago. Bonnie and Chica are destroying the dining area, and there are only so many tables to hide under. They found a new game to play. Wacka Ralph. Game over. Alright, I'm gonna go through now, I'll be back in like a minute, we're gonna see if there's any other paths that we haven't taken yet that maybe we can uncover new things with. Okay, when we first got in the vent from the office that we discovered behind the lockers, you could go left or right. We went left first, which is correct. If you go right, we get here. Picturing the floor plan of the restaurant in your mind, you anticipate that turning right will be the most direct way to the northwest corner, in the backstage area where the breaker room is. The thumps of your hands and feet as you crawl through the ventilation shaft echo around you, and the thin metal vibrates with a wobbly sound. You're surprised that the flimsy construction can hold your weight, and even more surprised at how spacious it is inside, less constricting than you expected. You suppose good airflow and filtration are important in public spaces, especially where notorious disease vectors like children are involved. These shafts are probably big enough for an animatronic to pass through, so someone your size has no trouble negotiating them. However, it's a confusing labyrinth of passages in here. You navigate by instinct, trying to move generally toward the stage, but the layout doesn't make any sense. Some branches lead to dead ends for no discernible reason, while others let out into dusty rooms you don't even recognize. It seems like whole sections of the building have been closed off over the years, or perhaps they're expansions that were abandoned before completion. Odd. Or maybe you're just hallucinating, giving in to the darkness and the monotony in your imagination. Whatever the reason, you're well and truly lost. We can go straight or we can use the bonus item. I cannot wait to find out what this bonus item is and like why there's 30 different times to use it. The deeper you go, the more turned around you get. You realize too late that you should have tried to keep track of which turns you made. If only you had some string or breadcrumbs to help you find your way back to the security office. You crawl and crawl and crawl until you're too tired to crawl anymore. Haven't you been in here for days? The restaurant must have opened by now. And you haven't heard any people. And they must not hear you either. Tired, parched, and starving, you push away your fear of animatronics and bang and shout for someone to help you. Even an animatronic tracking you would be a welcome sight right now. At the end, you cling to the memory of your daughter. I'm sorry, Capellia. You croak through cracked and peeling lips. Management knows you must have crawled into the security office vent, yet no one ever finds and recovers your body. At least you're never forgotten. Occasionally, a customer will catch a whiff of you in the air, wrinkle their nose, and say, what is that horrible smell? Did something die inside these walls? Staff like to tell stories about the security guard who vanished to new employees, so they know they should never, ever crawl into a vent. Long after you're gone, your cautionary tale saves many lives. Alright, we're looking for more paths. Let's go forward. Pathy, pathy, paths, 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 trails and paths. Alright, just because I'm still confused on this whole coin thing and whether or not we should have it, um, if you try to put the coin on the side to make the scales balance, it says, You reach into your pocket and pull out the coin with Foxy's face that you found on your second night. Of course it belongs here. You carefully place the coin on top of the mound of coins and plastic gems in the pan on the right. Nothing happens. The plastic coin barely adds any weight to the pan and the scale doesn't shift at all. You wonder if you could just nudge it with your finger. It's not like a boulder's gonna chase you if you mess with the balance. But an alarm might go off, and that could bring something worse. You can always outrace a boulder, but not Foxy. If you don't have anything heavy to put on the right pan, maybe you need to take coins away from the one on the left. If you take them from the left, then you get caught stealing. If you put them on the right, then you win. If you put them on the breaker, then you go to the break break. Alright, so then that loops back around to the other option. Alright, well, it seems like that really is um, all the paths here without that bonus item that we still don't have. I do actually think the game's probably broken with this whole coin thing. But we are now on to night five, the final night, unless you look at the table of contents or read the back of the book where it tells you there are six nights. So we're going to see what happens. Each of these episodes, I thought I thought I was probably going to read through this whole book in like two sittings. Each episode is going to be like, it has been like an hour. Um, so we're going to do part five next time. For now, I'm just glad you're here. I'm glad you're still watching. Remember, friend friendly is, is for Freddy. I said that very wrong. Freddy stands for... Friendly, respectful engagement, discussion, and discourse yields success. Make sure to be nice to each other in the comments. Consider supporting the creators you must admire. Never lose sight of the things that are most important to you. And um, we got we got to pray for Toto here, so that this wound heals. One subscribe is one pray. There's no blood here at all. You were faking. You made me ask them to subscribe, and you were faking the whole time. I'm getting a divorce.